with Valen Proengs and today we're going to talk about the shopping project of CS50 AI. So in this project, we're going to write an AI to predict whether online shopping customers will complete a purchase. How this will work? We're going to run our code sending the code and a CSV file. If we take a look at the source code, the CSV, the CSV file has more than 12,000 lines with multiple information. So we have 17 uh, columns in our CSV file, such as administrative, administrative duration, and two revenue. Our goal is to use the 16 columns we have from administrative until weekend to predict the revenue if the person purchased or not in the online shopping. Okay, and then we're going to calculate the correct answers, the incorrect, the true positive rate and the true negative rate. In order to get the source code, as I showed you, you need to click here to download and remember to run this pip install scikit-learn so you can use the library of scikit-learn we're going to use in this project. All right. Before we start, I, wanted, I want to show a little bit how the code looks like. It's important for us to understand what we have in our hands before we start coding. So here we are importing two libraries, the CSV and the sys library. The sys library is the one that will allow us to send two command line arguments when we're running our code and the CSV will allow us to read the CSV content. Then we are importing the train test split and the k-neighbors classifier from scikit-learn that it's the goal of the lecture understanding how to work with the, this library. We have a test size of 0.4 so 40% will be for text and 60% will be for training our model. In the main function we're checking if we are receiving the exact command line arguments we want so shopping.py and the csv file if so we're gonna have we have here these two variables evidence and labels that will be generated by the function load data a function we will implement then with the evidence and labels so remember evidence will be all the columns in our csv file from administrative to weekend and the label will be the revenue because we want to know if the person bought or not once we have this information we're going to use the train test split to split our data into test and train so 60% will be for training the model and 40% will be for testing later on you can play around and changing here this this uh, number the model here we're gonna call the function train model this function we will implement the k neighbors classifier we have here predictions that will use a function predict from scikit-learn to predict the revenue according to our model and then we have sensitivity and specificity that will be returned by this function evaluate that we will build as well and finally we will print these four statements as we are seeing here the printing of the four statements all right if you scroll down you see that we have the three functions not implemented error so this means we need to implement so before we implement the other parts let's do the shopping.csv so here we're going to receive a file name and this function what we need to do we need to load shopping data from a csv file called file name in our case will be called shopping.csv and, and we're going to convert into a list of evidence and a list of labels and we're going to return a tuple evidence labels that's why here we are receiving we're saying evidence labels equals to what this function is returning and evidence should be a list of lists where each list contains the following values in order so we need to put in order the list with all this information so we're going to convert into an integer float or the month we're going to convert into numbers as well and the labels should be the corresponding list of labels where each label is one if revenue is true and zero otherwise here we have a bunch of things to do so let's start with the label before we start let's create two empty lists where we can fill in the data so here i'm going to create an evidence equals to an empty list and labels equals to an empty list here instead of ev yes i will call evidence to read the content in our CSV file, remember that we have the CSV library. So we're going to use with open. We need to say the name of the file. In our case, in this function, we're calling file name and oops, file name. And we want to open to read. So remember to say the mode that is reading. And here I'm going to say as file. I want to open up this as a list. So we're going to say here reader equals to csv.reader and we need to say the file and I'm gonna do a loop so you can see that we are printing out all the lines so for row in reader let's print row so if I run here python3 shopping.py shopping.csv let me save the file it will print out for us 
or it will crash. Let's see what comes first. It should print out for us all the rows, but I think it will raise an exception because there's a lot of not implemented function in here, but let's see. So it's printing out and it will raise an exception. So there you see, we have 12,000 rows our CSV file. But let's take a look at this last row because we're going to use this to help us out. We're going to add in the labels the last element of our list here. So the row minus one will be part of our label, but we can't append false or true. We need to convert true to number one and false to number zero. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to say that if row on position minus one to get the last position equals equals true true and if you see it's all capitalized we're gonna append in labels the number one else we're gonna append in labels the number zero so for the part of the labels we're done that's pretty much what we need to do now let's work with the evidence so here for the evidence we need to convert each part of our csv file in what they are expecting so for the first case, they want us to convert the first element of our list into an integer. And if you take a look in here at this example, it's a string. So we need to convert this into an integer. So let's do the following. I'm going to say evidence.append and I want to append a list inside. Let's do the following int row on position zero. This is the first element. After administrative, we want to float. So float row on position one. The, set, the third element we want to convert into an int integer. So int row on position two. Fourth element, we want to convert this one, two, three, four into a float. I know it's not that good. It's not so funny, but unfortunately we need to write it down this way. After this one, it's an integer again. So one, two, three, four, five, it's an integer. So int row on position four. The next one after an integer, it's a float. It will be one, two, three, four, five floats in a row. So float row on position five, and I will copy this. So, oops, one, two, three, four, five. So here, let me change number. So after the last float we saw, we have here month. We will skip month for now. So I'm gonna add something else later. Okay, for now I will skip it. After month, we wanna convert one, two, three, four in integers. So int row on position 11, and we're gonna copy this and paste four more three times. 12, 13, 14. And then we have here visitor type an integer zero if it's not returning, returning visitor. Sorry, not returning is new visitor and returning visitor is the number one. So we need to do an if statement here. So one, if row on position 14 is equals equals returning visitor. So here we're writing an if statement in the same line. Okay, so returning visitor, else it will be zero. And the last one is zero if weekend is false. And true if we can is one. So one if row on position 16 equals equals true, else zero. And now let's work with the month. So for the month, instead of writing, mm, interesting. If you see at the very beginning, we need to fix that. At the very beginning, if we're using the reader this way, we're going to read the first line. But we don't want to read the first line. We want to start reading from the sec. So before doing the loop, I'm going to use a function next that will go to the next line. So next reader to go to the next line. And then we just read the things that we are interested. And now for the month, we're going to create a variable here outside called month. And I want to put the name of all the months. If you see here, it's an abbreviation, right? So we have three letters for each month. So here we're going to say, we're going to create here a list with every month in an abbreviation. Okay. Remember to capitalize the first letter. Otherwise it doesn't work. June must be with four letters, but July is only with three. Then we have August, September, October, November, and December. So we have here all the months. And let me change here the variable to months. And for our, the part of the month that we are missing, they are saying at index from 0 January to 11 December. So we can get the index of the function of this list. So on position 0, we have January, on position 1, February, on position 2, Mars, until position 11, that is December. So to translate the name January to 0, we can use the index, the index of our list. So month.index here row on position 10. It's 